Hey, how's it going? Got a few questions for you. Are you looking for a budget friendly gun? Something that's not going to break the bank, but still something you can trust, something you can know is going to function every time you need to pull the trigger. If money is an issue, if say you only got 250 bucks to spend and you want something that's going to be dependable and you don't trust a lot of the cheaper semi-automatic guns that are out there and you're looking for a revolver, look at the Rock Island M206. I've had two of these. I've had other Rock Island pistols and I have never had any issues at all out of any of the Rock Islands except for when I first bought my first M206. I had to clean it because it had so much oil in it that it was just oozing out of the gun. Other than that, they seem to be a solid, solid option for the money. This is my particular M206, my second one. I've made several videos on this gun, but it was always about something about the gun. The first video I did, I wanted to blow up a revolver and see what it would take to blow a gun up. I'd never blown one up. First one I ever did, uh, you can go back and look. It's my very first video I ever posted. Terrible quality, terrible uh, camera work, terrible editing. Everything was awful about it. But it's my first video. And the gun did withstand a double charge. I put a double charge of powder in it. Uh, and it seemed to be perfect after that. The triple charge I put in there killed it. Like I say, you can go back and watch that if you want to. But then I had people wanting to know whether I would shoot plus P through these or not. So I loaded up a bunch of plus P ammo. And I went out and shot like 100 rounds. And the gun held up just fine. There was no signs of any uh, breakage, cracks, stretching, anything at all. Uh, I measured a few points on it just to make sure that everything was still good on it. The same as when I started, and it was. And I also compared this to the Taurus 856, which is a very... The Taurus is a great option as well, but it's usually a little more expensive than these are in gun stores and online. And the reason I'm doing this video is this gun is good enough, I believe, to have its own review. I've never done a review just on this, so today that's what we're doing. And before I get waving this around too much, I will show you that it is not chambered and it is safe. One of the first things you want to look at on any kind of self-defense weapon is how are the sights, because you want to be able to see them. Uh, this has the most basic of sights. The front sight is not interchangeable, it is what it is. The rear sight, as you can see here, is just a U notch. So when you line that sight up, you have black on black sights, which are not very visible at night at all, unless you're, you got some kind of positive light around you. But again, this gun is exactly what it is. It's a small self-defense snub nose revolver. You're not paying for fancy sights. You're not paying for a front and night sight. You're getting just what comes in the box. Now, if you want to make your front sight a little more visible, you can put a little bit of white paint on there or orange paint or get that glow-in-the-dark paint. I've seen people do that, and that seems to work also. But for what this is, self-defense situation, a basic point-and-shoot on this is going to be about exactly where you point. You point this gun, and it's going to shoot. The wife and I went out the other day, and we shot 100 rounds through this. It shot great, no issues. We had a, a 38 Special Reloads that I'd loaded. They all went off without a catch. I had one that I had to double strike, and I believe that was an ammo-related issue. It was an old 38 case, and it seemed that the uh, primer was seated farther in it, like the primer pocket hole was deeper than the other rounds. So I'm not going to say it was a gun issue. That was definitely an ammunition issue. So, I mean, 99 rounds shot perfectly through it. One had to be double striked. Um, other than that, this thing shoots as good as you can expect for a $250 revolver to shoot. I have seen these cheaper than that. I've seen them all the way down to like $225. And once you pay your taxes and shipping and FFL fees and stuff, you might be at $250, $260, depending on where you get your guns shipped to. But if you find these in a store for $225, you know, $229, um, your best bet is to buy it right there on the spot because you cannot get a better revolver for that kind of money.
these are our last four rounds out of 100. And we missed two. I know there's going to be a lot of people arguing and say, no, you can get a Taurus that cheap. Dude, I have never seen a Taurus that cheap. The cheapest I've seen that Taurus is like 275 279 So, I mean, we're talking apples and oranges here. As far as money goes, this is the cheapest option that I would depend my, I would use to defend my life with. I would definitely carry this. I have carried this just to do it because it's America and I'll do what I want. But this makes a good backup gun. It makes a good pocket gun, uh, tackle box gun, toolbox gun, a truck gun. Now, I personally don't like leaving guns unsecured in my truck. Uh, so I can't advocate saying this is a great truck gun because I don't like leaving guns unsecured in my vehicle. But if you're into truck guns, you do you, and this would be a good option for it. And I do have the uh, HKS speed loader. This is the number 10, and it does work on this. You kind of got to fight just a little bit to get the rounds in there because it wants to touch the frame there. But once you put it in, let them go. If you wiggle it just right, it'll drop all six rounds in and you're ready to shoot. Now the trigger on this is decent for what it is. The double action pull is extremely heavy, which is what you're gonna get from most double action revolvers anyway, whether it's a Ruger, a Smith, I mean, Colt, anything, they're gonna have a heavy double action. Now, as far as single action goes, let me get my tool. We'll go ahead and cock the hammer. And we got the Wheeler trigger pull gauge. We'll stick her on there. I keep my big fat ass thumb out of the way. She broke it like six and a half pounds. Let's try it again. And I'll show you the next time. Yeah, just a skosh over six pounds. I'm not sure how well that's gonna show up on there. But yes, you got a pretty heavy trigger. It's not, you know, definitely not a target trigger. This is a self-defense trigger. But having a six and a half pound trigger, that's about what you're gonna expect for a self-defense gun in this price range. And as far as lockup goes on this, uh, if you pull it back in every single position, all six, it always locks up well before the trigger gets, or the uh, hammer gets all the way back. So we're good there. And when you pull the trigger double action, it also goes into position well before the hammer gets back. So you do not have to worry about this gun shooting out of battery. Because I've had some other guns that when I do this with, when I try to rotate the cylinder, I gotta give it a little touch to get the lock up the rest of the way unless you just yank on it like that and the gun would go off. One of the cool things about this when you buy them it comes with this plastic grip. Uh, the two that I've bought brand new the plastic grip was not on it it was in the box separate and I had to put it on but it comes with these wooden uh, boot grip style grips. Uh, they're very small keeps the back strap exposed on it and it makes the gun extremely tiny and easy and uh, easy to you know put in your pocket. Uh, makes it really compact, way more compact than it is, but it's not near as pleasant to shoot as it is with these grips that come secondary in the box. The cylinder release on this is just like a Colt, which I did not know in my first video, and I had a bunch of people tell me, yeah, it's a Colt, you don't know anything about guns. And that's like, I don't know anything about guns at the time. I had just never shot a Colt. I'd never handled a Colt. I'd always been a Smith & Wesson guy. I'd always shot Smith & Wessons and Rugers, and had never shot a, uh, Cold. So, I mean, it is what it is. Now I know. And thank you for all you internet geniuses to point that out and let me know. Someone's always got something to say. But there's a cylinder release. You just pull backwards on it, and your cylinder rolls right out. And there's not much else really to talk about with this gun because it's just devoid of any kind of feature. It has, you know, there's no rail on most revolvers for a light. Uh, you can't change the sights on this. You can change the grip. That's about it. But if you're looking for a good budget option, something that if you're in a pinch and need a gun and you want a revolver for self-defense, I can 100% guarantee that if you get one of these out of the box that run right, you're going to love it.
for the money. I've never heard anybody say, man, mine runs great, but I hate it because it's there's nothing really to hate about a gun that runs this good out of the box for the, for that kind of coin. I just wanted to keep this short and sweet um, just to give you know a bit of an update. I've put several hundred rounds through this now that I've had it, and it's ran beautifully, like I said, all except for that one. And I, I, I know it was ammo related. It was not the gun itself. But if you got any questions about this or if you got one of these, let me know how you like it. And uh, as always, thanks for watching. Stay safe and let's take back our Second Amendment.